What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2025 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300, courtesy of Mercedes-Benz of Hagerstown in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today, we're in this one because I love the styling of the GLC. I think it looks pretty darn good. You also have absolutely stunning ambient lighting. Wait until I show you guys what that looks like inside later in this video. And in case you're curious, the GLC is going to be competing with the BMW X3 and the Genesis GV70, just to name a couple. But ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And it's always let's start with pricing and so there's essentially two different configurations for the glc 300 you got the rear wheel drive variant starting at forty nine thousand two hundred fifty dollars which is a two thousand one hundred fifty dollar bump from the 2024 model year in case you were curious then you got the all-wheel drive the formatic all-wheel drive which is what mercedes-benz calls it that starts at fifty one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars but regardless of the configuration that you go with the power plant on the glc 300 is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder with a mild hybrid system putting out 255 horsepower 5800 rpm 295 pound feet of torque coming in at 2000 rpm that power being sent to the rear wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will of course be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.2 seconds that's respectable with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 27 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the GLC. I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode. So it's labeled dynamic. It's located just underneath of that infotainment screen. Drive modes are going to include off-road, eco, comfort, sport, and individual, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. So now that we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration gear to the test. I want to see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here and let's see how quickly we can get our new glc 300 up to speed all right in three two one go <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> that's quite brilliant yeah that's plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto any highway and the pedal sensors are actually quite nice as well like decent reaction times and they feel very high quality as well it's not just a matte black plastic as you quite often do find even on other mercedes-benz actually so it's a very nice feel to them very quick reacting plenty of an acceleration that was that was fun man so yeah not gonna have any issues there but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.5 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.6 inch solid rear discs as far as that braking feel goes it's definitely on the softer side of things, which kind of makes sense for what this SUV is. It's not necessarily a performance SUV, so you're not going to find that firm braking feel, but it definitely brakes more like a luxury vehicle, which is what the GLC 300 is. So I don't have any issues with it, but then touching on suspension and handling, of course, you're going to find a four wheel independent suspension, but to my surprise, actually, an adaptive variable suspension does come standard on the GLC 300. You guys know I love that because that essentially monitors each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road of perfections giving you a smoother ride but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling as well so giving you the best of both worlds you gotta love that so as far as ride quality goes on my short little test drive here today it's been 100 on point so definitely not having any issues there as far as steering feel goes it does adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in so when you have it in that sport driving mode it's going to be a much heavier feel to it and then when you take it out of that sport driving mode put it back in comfort here it's going to loosen up so it's kind of got something for everybody i'll just put it that way which is definitely a good thing as far as cabin noise goes we're going zero miles per hour right now to stop sign so that's what you guys are hearing right now i got the air on in the background but so far honestly when i was going 50 miles per hour back there definitely didn't have any issues with cabin noise so that's perfectly on point as well 
And touching our rear visibility, looking out my rear view mirror, you definitely shouldn't have any issues there. I can see fine out the back there. But on top of that, touching on forward visibility a little bit, rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the GLC 300. So definitely a big fan of that. Whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you gotta worry about, kind of like automatic headlights. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 finished in black. Yes, that is the exact exterior color name that Mercedes-Benz went with for this one. So who would have thought? But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the GLC is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter W, indicating that the GLC 300 is built and assembled in Germany, as it should be. But starting up front, you're going to find a single horizontal bar on that front grille that does come standard. However, there is something called an AMG line package. It goes for a little over $3,000. That's going to give you that diamond block front grille. Also a unique front face and a lot more gloss black accents as opposed to the aluminum trim accent. So don't want to differentiate that because we do have the AMG line package with us here today. Guys can see those uh, bottom two corners there. One of the more distinguishing features with that package because it gives you some massive front air curtains helping direct the air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics there. But to the sides, LED headlights do come standard with LED daytime running lights you get the automatic feature you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there but like I said, a lot of chrome finishes and aluminum trim finishes if you don't have the AMG line package. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of gloss black finishes like you're looking at now. But anyways, love the front end look here. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the GLC, starting all the way to the top there, we have some gloss black roof rails. However, of course, they'll be finished in aluminum if you don't go with the AMG line, of course. Chrome or gloss black window surrounds, body colored or gloss black side mirrors. This is all dependent upon the configuration again. Still in the side mirrors though, they are power adjustable. You do get LED integrated turn signals. They will be heated and they are actually power folding. That comes standard as well. So that's pretty stinking cool. Now the interesting little tidbit for the side profile here is the fact that even with our AMG line package, we still have the chrome accents on the door handles. Now, I don't think they look bad. I think they look actually pretty darn good, but it's interesting how all of the other chrome accents were swapped out for gloss black, but the door handles remain the same. So I don't know, just something there. That's all I'm saying. But then take a look down at the wheel setup. 18 inch aluminum alloys do come standard. However, there are 19 and 20 inch designs available to really personalize and to make in your own. And of course the AMG Live package has its own unique set of wheels that we have with us here today as well. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the GLC, all the way to the top, you will not find a shark fin antenna or any kind of antenna for that matter. Very clean look, so you gotta love that. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. You got the rear window wiper back there as well. LED tail lights do come standard. You gotta love that for a little added illumination at night there. All the way to the bottom of that rear bumper. Again, it's gonna be either aluminum or some gloss black kind of trim, depending upon the configuration. Again, we got the gloss black, of course. But here's the thing that bothers me just a little bit. It would make it look like there's integrated dual exhaust outlets with those chrome tips there, but that's actually filled in with plastic. The real exhaust is actually located just underneath of everything. I'll give you guys a B-roll. It is dual exhaust outlets, but it is tucked away. So don't fake it, Mercedes. Just embrace the dual exhaust outlets tucked away. But I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So but now since we are around to the back of the GLC, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it actually is a power tailgate that does come standard for whatever configuration you go with. So 
that's pretty stick and cold there is a button on the key fob there's a rubberized button on the tailgate itself then as well but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 21.9 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 40 20 40 split meaning the rear seats fold down pretty darn flat bumping that up to 59.3 cubic feet there is a 12 volt power outlet back there and by the way before i forget there's actually a button in the cargo area to fold those rear seats down if you want a little added convenience there you got an elastic strap back there to hold things in place there's some chrome tie down anchors as well a little bit of netted storage there in the back corner grocery bag hooks you got a cargo cover then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will find a spare tire which you guys know i always love to say but then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 37.4 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the rear seats there rear center armrest with a phone and cup holders does come standard this is one that originally got me the way that works is if you press the rear cup holders all the way in it's going to pop out with a phone holder but if you press it in then just a little bit and then let it go that's where you get your cup holder so okay so anybody was curious how that worked because that one is a little bit tricky rear ventilation just in front of those rear passengers and you got a little bit of storage under there then as well but then make your way up to the front seats power adjustable front seats with memory settings for up to three different drivers and three different passengers that's something you don't always find so that's pretty sick and cool heated front seats do come standard ventilated front seats are going to be optional in my short little test drive here today i had no issues whatsoever when it comes to seat comfort as expected from mercedes-benz but so then making our way to the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping of course it is power adjustable and it is leather wrapped as well and i like the little kind of perforation kind of indentations found on the sides there as well that felt pretty good 10 and 2 grips are on the thicker side of things also like the flat bottom to it as well then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key this is a very heavy duty key here got lock on the top just below that unlock and the button to pop through your tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that very high quality engine start button it's very nice actually uh located just to the left of the infotainment screen and so once started up you're looking at a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and it's amazing so there's a home button on the left hand side of the steering wheel if you press that you have all sorts of different loadouts you have sport classic you can do a full navigation setup up there if you wanted to and there's a nice little off-road setup you could do as well so i'm just going to leave it on classic for now because it kind of matches our ambient lighting but definitely a very nice looking gauge cluster digital speedometer how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature everything you need up there but then making our way to overall interior quality there's a dual pane panoramic moonroof that comes standard on the glc 300 you gotta love that Frameless rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors as well. That's very nice. Plenty of different wood trims are going to be available for this one. That's going to be located kind of just above the passenger side glove box and uh, surrounding the infotainment screen. And it's a matte texturized wood. So big fan of that. Got a wireless phone charger located just in front of the uh, cup holders here. 64 colors of ambient lighting. Let me show you guys. I took it through the car wash. So I wanted to get a couple shots of the ambient lighting. It's phenomenal. I think the only thing that would beat it on when it comes to ambient lighting is that new Sony Aphilia that's not out yet. But this ambient lighting is 100% on point. I absolutely love it. But anyways, just behind the wireless phone charger, you have a couple cup holders. And then within the center armrest, there's a decent amount of storage in there. Actually got a little tray up top and a little bit of LED lighting located in there as well, along with the USB charging port. But overall, as far as interior quality goes, everything is absolutely phenomenal as expected from mercedes vans a lot of very high quality finishes as expected but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen you're looking at an 11.9 inch portrait style touchscreen display gotta love that bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay you got factory navigation system up there as well you can check out your climate control settings as i have been doing when i started this drive uh ambient lighting settings is up there as well you can actually check out some off-road statistics up there too which is kind of cool along with your radio information of course so when it comes to the sound system it is a burmester 3d surround sound system that comes standard so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one there's hope in the jesus way a lot of really deep bass going on in the background i love that it almost made it feel like you were at a concert so 
that was really really good that was a really nice sound system for sure but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the glc in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board that panoramic view monitor that's going to be optional there to the left but that gives you that bird's eye view which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags do come standard you got a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors of tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard a collision mitigation braking system driver attention monitoring system parktronic with active park assist that is an amazing system with any mercedes-benz by the way active brake assist autonomous emergency braking blind spot assist and mercedes-benz emergency call service the way that works is if you were to get into an accident the airbags deploy the car is actually going to call you and ask you if you need an ambulance or the police or whatever the case so amazing safety feature right there too but Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GLC, excellent interior quality, specifically the wood trim and the ambient lighting. Absolutely phenomenal with any Mercedes, really. Even the aluminum speaker covers are just very high quality, but park assist is great. Like I was just saying, the ride quality is amazing because of that adaptive damping suspension. Braking feel is a bit soft. That's maybe one thing I would kind of adjust a little bit if I were Mercedes-Benz. I mean, it is a luxury braking feel. It is kind of to be expected here, but... Uh, just a little more bite, I think, would do good for me at least. And the other thing is, this thing can get very pricey very quick. So just keep an eye out for that because there's a lot of options to really customize this one and make it your own, which means it could easily jump up thousands of dollars. But anyways, that's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay cold.